Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're well. Just got off of Daily Faith TV with Philip Cameron, and they, of course they invited me back again. I'm excited about going on there again with them soon. Uh, listen, thanks for being a part of Daymaker. I appreciate it very much. My sidekick's around here somewhere. She probably is going to step in here. So this is a por portion of the word I just gave over over at Daily Faith TV. I was uh, last night preparing. I wrote a message on Roar, uh, the roar of the Lord. I wrote a message on, um, I think I wrote a message on cost. I can't even remember. I was, no, I wrote, wrote a message on um, wasted years. And then the Lord prophetically moved me over to this simple message. So I'm just going to give it to you. Daymaker is simple most every day anyway. Philip Cameron just invited everybody to join us over at Daymaker. So anyway, um, here's, you know, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, the most, the, the most powerful message ever, the most powerful sermons ever spoken, I think, was the Sermon on the Mount. Why is that? Because Jesus was shifting the perspective of all of us. Like, that's, this is what he does. Meeting Jesus is profound, always profound. And he knows exactly where to get our attention and where to get into our heart and where to get in our, our brains and how to work in our souls and, and all. He's just a master communicator as, as well as the fact that he's God and he has discernment. So anyway, so Jesus, you know, he says things like this. Blessed are you when, when, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. He's like saying, when you're persecuted, just, just rejoice about it. Now, that's kind of cray-cray, right? And way out there in left field. Uh, he said, you have certainly said that the, to those of old, you shall not murder. Who are murderers shall be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that if you're angry with your brother. So Jesus takes it to a whole nother level, takes us higher in our thought and says, no, it's just not murder that causes judgment against you, but even anger. And you're like, wait a minute. What do you mean? And God is, Jesus is showing us, let me shift this perspective. Let me show you a better way to live. Then in verse 38, chapter five, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person. Not to resist an evil person. <sighs> Whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn to the other him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Looney tunes. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you. Do not turn away. That's a prophetic word for somebody. So let's consider it. Let's, let's consider, and this is what I want to talk to you about today. Consider the fact that our ways are not God's ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Then in verse eight and nine, he shows us his ways. Here's his ways. This is the way he works. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, natural, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the rain and snow comes down. This is God's ways. The rain works. The rain makes the seed work. The rain brings forth and sprouts. It, the rain brings the seed to the sower and it brings bread to the eater. This is the way God works. This is the way that God gets things to us, right? One of the ways. He does miracles as well, but this is one of the ways. And this is then he says in verse 10 and 11, here's my thoughts. So shall my word be. So his, so his word is his thoughts. So shall my word be that goes from your mouth. It shall not return unto me empty me. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing which I sent it. So let me remind you, let me say this to you. Get back to the word. Get back to the word. Get clear what's clear. It's, it's, it's vital. It's vital that we hear a word. What is the biggest struggle you have? What is God saying about that struggle? What's God saying about the biggest struggle you have? What's God saying about the biggest thing that you're dealing with? What is God saying about it? Not your friends. Not Dr. Phil, not Oprah, but not your comforters, but the comforter. What is the comforter saying? Because God says crazy things. Like he said to, to Paul, the ship's going down, Paul. Stay on the ship. It's like, what? The ship's going to decimate. Decimate. It's going to be declared disaster. It's going down. But stay on the ship and you shall be saved. This is the way God works. 
He doesn't work the way man works. His word works differently. Now, here's the word of the Lord. Some of you, some of us, are running, running to comfort rather than running to the closet. Yes, the prayer closet. We're running to comfort. We are comforting our heart. We're in, we're in, maybe we're in spiritual struggle. Maybe we don't know what God is saying. Maybe we're, we're, maybe we're unsurrendered, but we're running for comfort because we're seeking the external comforts rather than confronting for the internal answers. And, and not, uh, I should say, battling for them, right? Uh, con, ah, I missed the word. But anyway, so, and here's the other thing I want to say. Listen to me. It's not supposed to be easy. Don't make easy. Don't think it's supposed to be easy. It's not easy. It's never going to be easy. It's always going to be difficult. Difficult is the way that leads to life. Don't think it's going to be easy. All right, so here's, so here's what I want you to consider. I want you to consider your foundation. Jesus was saying, consider this. Just consider this. Blessed are you when you're persecuted. What? Rejoice when you're persecuted. What? Yes, consider it a blessing. So I want you to consider this. Here's what he says. Everyone who hears the words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds beat and blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had not been because it did not, because it had been founded on the rock. It did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was its fall. Now watch, the, the, the people who built the wise house, the wise men who are on the rock, they still had a storm. The people in this foolish house, they still had a storm. What does it mean? Both houses, no matter how you built it, good, bad, ugly, poor, strong, weak, both of them have, sometimes we feel like, well, I'm, I'm on the rock, I'm on Jesus, I'm not supposed to have storms. You're gonna have storms. Come on in, baby. The storms are gonna come. The, but, the, but the house that's founded on the rock, you wanna get a chair? The house that's founded on the rock can weather the storm. The rock is Jesus. The rock is, Jesus said, he who hears these words of mine and does them, let me get you back to your foundation. Let me get you back to, this. chaos and confusion makes us run away from what we know. It makes us make the wrong choices. It, it, it's, it puts us in a short-circuiting place where we don't remember what God said. The apostle Peter said, I'm coming. He said, I'm going to remind you. I want you to recall some things I've already said to you. Why? Because when you forget who you are, you make the wrong choice. If you want to dive in, dive in. So here's what I'm saying. The word is a weather strip against the storm. The word is a weather strip against the storm. Remember that. Remember, when, when, see, when, when God sees the word, he, he sees the rock. He sees his, and he sees you standing on that rock. You might be blowing in the wind. You might be tethering in the wind. But the truth of the matter is you're on the rock. You're not going to get blown off a place or blown away because your life is on the rock. But when your life is on the sand, the, the found, when the foundation's gone, there's nothing to stand on. And if you didn't build it on the rock, see, when, when God sees the word, remember what he said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. They applied the blood. If you hear the word and do the word, then your house is going to be on the rock. And sand is basically made up of rock that is ground up. Sand is basically made, let me read this to you, unconsolidated granular materials consisting of rock fragments. In other words, we, the way that we end up from moving from, from, from the foundation to being strong, from the, from the uh, rock to sand is we grind up the word into particles that we like. And then we get off the foundation. And then our life becomes built on sand. We shift from God's been good to me, God's raised me up, God's made me something special, and now it becomes, I'm special, I'm special. Then we compromise the word, and the one who was, we were on the rock, and we got off the rock, and we got off the rock of he's our foundation to I'm the foundation. All of a sudden, our life goes from the, the rock to the sand, and then anything can blow us away. Charlotte, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to, um, yeah. the Lord's been having me read the book of Daniel, the prophet Daniel, and yeah. what you're saying and just confirming even uh, the one point I want to make is in Daniel 10, 12, uh, the angel said to him, your words 
were heard when Daniel was crying yeah, out yeah. to God and he had visions yeah. and he had things yeah. um, that, the, that the Lord was revealing to him and it was really grieving his heart about the end times and what was coming, even to the, the persecution of, of God's children. And what you're saying is so true. I think it's so important that we realize that persecutions are going to come, hard times are going to come, but if you're founded upon the rock and you're speaking God's word and you were talking about words, uh, the yeah. point in this in, in, chap, in chapter 10, verse 12 was, your words, the angel was telling him, your words were heard, and yes. I have come because of your words. Your words. Right. The angel came and visited Daniel because he was in, he was speaking interceding, the word. he was praying, yeah. he was speaking the word, but because of he was seeking God humbly before the Lord, um, the angel came. So I, I, I think it's important too that we realize that angels hearken at the voice of God's word. Right. And they are there for us as well. That's right. why we say, Lord, I assign the angels yes. in the situation, around my situation. Yes. And that God, that your word will prevail. Yes. But it won't prevail if we're not speaking. That's right. right. It's all right. So, anyway, so we encourage you. Listen, back, yeah. here's where I just want to switch to prophetic mode for a minute. Yes. Get back, back to the word. This is what I said on Daily Faith TV today. I've never lost a battle I gave to the word. I've never lost a battle I surrendered to the word. Listen to me. In your chaos, in your confusion, and in your struggle, and like Charlotte said, because Daniel's words were heard and he was speaking the word of the Lord, the angels, the hierarchy of the angels, the highest of the, the high-ranking angels were sent to war for him. Why? But if he had been wavering, God, I don't know what to do. God, I don't know what to say. God, I don't know what to say. And he said for 21 days, what did he stand on? The word. He stood on the rock because he was on the foundation. Listen to me, get back to the foundation. Get off of your feelings, get off of your emotions, get off of church services that make you feel good and get on the rock, get on the word. And when you get on the word, you're gonna win your battles. You're never gonna fall below the, the strength of your foundation. You're gonna stand and having done all to stand and eventually you're gonna win. You're going to win, so just stay there. So let me ask you a few questions and we're going to close. What have you added? What have you added? What have you divided? What have you added to the word or what have you divided away from the word mm -hmm. to make it more, to bring a different outcome than what God wanted? Mm -hmm. And some of us shift the word that God gives us because of compromise, because we can't, we, we, we may want to, we want to make it unclear because God's made it too clear and I don't want to do that. That's dividing down the word. You know what? Let me, let me give you this for just a minute. Here's what the Bible says about to Saul. Because Saul was given a direct word from the Lord and Saul went out, S-A-U-L, Saul went out and did not do what God has said. And here's just what the yes, word Samuel, said to him. First of all, it said, Samuel said, you were little in your own eyes. Were, were you not head of the tribes of Israel and did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, S-A-U-L, Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, wrong, mm. and gone on the mission. He did go, so he's breaking it down. I brought back Agag, the king of Amalekites. He was supposed to kill him, and I utterly destroyed the Amalekites, which he did not do, he, so, didn't, he did not. He said, but the people, so he's the leader, but he, he, the people took the blood of the sheep and the ox. And he said, we should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord, your God in, in, in Gilgal. In other words, he said, see, God told him to, to, to slay everything and even the animals. But what they did is they swooped upon the animals and made them their own. And he said, but we took them to sacrifice. Here's what Saul said. Yes, we took them. But God, we're going to sacrifice them to you. But here's what God said. Your obedience is better than sacrifice. Wow. Your obedience, let me say it this way. I swear I wrote it. Your obedience is a better sacrifice than a sacrifice. Your obedience is a better sacrifice than a sacrifice. So See, God was clear with Saul, but Saul made unclear what was very clear. And when we do those things, and I, I'm going to just read this. Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Mm. Saul said, to behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed 
It means to obey and to heed than the fat of rams. The fat was the anointing of the anointed portion of the animals off of the animal to sacrifice to the Lord. The, the word fat literally means anointed. He says, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as a iniquity and idolatry. Did you hear that? <laughs> Stubbornness oh is as iniquity and idolatry. In other words, he says, when you're stubborn towards what I told you to do, you make yourself the idol because you think you know better than my way. Gosh, my Stubbornness is as iniquity, which is the word trespass and sin together. Com combined God words, forgets. sin and trespasses. Iniquity, which means the sin of the soul. In equity, okay? Lack of equity, in equity, all right? So rebellion is when we choose an alternative. Stubbornness means our strong will. Your strong will to your way is equal to iniquity and idolatry. So what is he saying? Obedience is total compliance to God's way. And that's what we and you have to do. So let me ask, let me close it with this. What have you made unclear that is purely clear? What have you compromised that God said to fully obey? And that's for all of us. Now, I got a little preach on me this morning. I hope that helps. I'm going to smile. Welcome to day, day. So <laughs> glad your day's better because of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys, listen, have a great day. I'm going to go. I've had a great morning of preaching on two places Getting now. Get obedience to go out so the blessing may come. That's right. right. Come over oh, here and tell them. Yeah. Yes, and you know, and it starts with repentance. Yeah. Say, well, how do I do that? Just when the Lord reveals something to us, it's just saying, God, Thank you for revealing that to yes, me. Yes, yes. Lord, my heart, I want to line my heart back up with you today and get back in the blessings and the obedience of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We love y'all. We love y'all. Bless you. Welcome to Daymaker. We'll see you next time Daymaker, right here sure on Day. Yes, all you guys, on. thanks for being on there. Share the video. So, lot, so much and share the video with others. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Daymaker Amen. Today.